good evening, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Race Face Spotlight. Today, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to be trying some new technology. Most of you have probably already used this, but it's called Zoom. And we're going to Zoom all the way from Florida up to the state of Washington, where we find race car driver Bryce Kazanson. Bryce, how are you doing this evening? Oh, I'm doing pretty good. I'm excited. So, uh, man, you've had what an interesting season that you've had so far. But I want to give people a little bit of background on you because, um, as I've told you before, you're kind of one of the uh, race faces, unbelievable success stories. You know, we've actually met in Las Vegas, Nevada at a quarter midget race. And that was just a little bit over two years ago. Mm -hmm. And so you went from quarter midgets, you went into racing some some legend cars, a little bit of micro sprint, but two years ago, you jumped directly into the middle and you got into a super late model. So what has that been like kind of going through this transformation as fast as you've gone through? Well, at first it was pretty overwhelming, I'm not gonna lie, but uh, I mean, I, I definitely got matched up with the right team. Uh, Jefferson Racing, they've been awesome to me, I mean, Jeff does a really good job of teaching me everything because, you know, even that year where I was running micro sprints and uh, legends back in like 2018, 2019, I, uh, I was mostly running dirt. I, I wasn't even running too many legend races. So uh, he, with, I, I had experience, but it wasn't exactly the right experience. So, and especially with me not having almost any pavement experience on like uh three eighths tracks. I mean, it, it took a while. I mean, it took quite a few races for me to get it down, but I mean, we just kept on working on it and eventually it, it all came to me and it's, you know, been history from there. Well, you know, I think the one thing that we know about Bryce Kazanson is everywhere that you go, you're fast. You've never had any issues of not being fast. And as, as you hear me tell race car drivers all the time that Fast is something that you can't teach a race car driver. It's kind of like you either got it or you don't got it. Mm -hmm. And you definitely have been fast everywhere that you've gone. And like you said, I mean, you didn't have a junior late model to go to. You even skipped past pro late models and went directly into a super late model. So I don't think I've had anybody that's excelled that fast into something. And a lot of that has to do, again, as you spoke about, is your ge geographic location up in Washington. We don't have as many options for you to do that. But, uh, you know, getting, getting uh, you know, synced up with the first year Jefferson Pitts Racing, and then as they kind of went their separate ways to get with Jefferson Racing, I mean, you've been in one of the top rides um, in the country as far as late models are concerned. And uh, so let's talk a little bit about this season. We don't have to go through every single race, but the one that I do want to highlight is, is that you went out and on the East Coast, and you raced on the East Coast for your very first time. You went out there to one of the top late model teams there is, Lee Falk Racing. You went up to Tri-County Speedway. Tell us what that whole weekend was like. Well, it was really surprising and different. Uh, probably the biggest difference for me was that uh, it's so underpowered compared to a late model down there. I think I was running in a limited class and then a pro class uh, for a practice. And uh it probably down 150 horsepower from the super late models that I raced. So going into that weekend, I really had to learn how to roll the corners because it's all about corner speed there because it's not like the super late models where you have so much power that you can rely a lot on getting to the gas quicker. It's, you know, all about getting into that corner. But, I mean, Lee, Lee Falk and, and everyone on this team, they work for me really well. Uh, they're, they're another top team top late model team in the nation, and they just did a really great job of teaching me in a really short time. We ended up having a lot of success at uh, Tri-County there. No, you went to Tri-County, and I'm not going to say you had a little bit of success. I think you had a lot of success, because I think what a lot of people learn, especially, um, and, and I'll just say it like it is, I mean, West Coast drivers that come to the East Coast, it's a whole different style of racing. Um, drivers out on the East Coast are extremely aggressive, um, a lot of competition, you went to Tri-County, again, never been at the track, never been in a limited late model, so to speak, and, and you went up there and you qualified great and you finished seventh in the race. I think you kind of blew everybody away. I mean, yeah, it's such a tight field down there. I mean, it's probably a 1920 car field, but there wasn't, you know, there's usually that one straggler, there's 
three cars that just get lapped twice. I mean, it's not like that over there. Everyone's there and every, everyone has a competitive car and it's just it really crazy. I mean, it's it's so much different, especially, you know, me hopping into a new car like that. And I didn't really know what to expect, but I mean, it was a really great experience that I had down there. Yeah, and not to not to add any pressure on it, but right before the race started, I think we remember that Lee come up and go, oh, by the way, try to take care of this thing because I already sold this car. He had already yeah, sold the car that you were driving. And he was just like, I don't really want to have to fix it. And I have to say that I think you came in, and I'm not sure there was a mark on that car anywhere. Yeah, the, the buyer actually came and talked to me, too. He was looking at the car, and I said, hey, uh, how are you doing? And he's like, oh, this is my car. I'm like, what? It's your car? He's like, oh, yeah, I just bought it from Leaf Hall, so don't wreck it. I'm like, well. And I, uh, I, got, I put one donut hole on the car, and the final, it was actually the final lap on the final straight. They come to the checkered, me in the sixth-place car. We kind of both moved moved into each other, but I mean, other than that, I kept pretty clean. Yeah, I was, I was, I, I was. I mean, I'll, I'll tell you what. I I don't think there was probably a more proud person in the whole race track than I was because, you know, again, you know, again, your first time out there, and and I think what you did really well was you earned respect of a lot of race car drivers because they're less like, you know, okay, who is this kid coming from? Uh, you know, all the way up on the West Coast in Washington. We've never heard of him. And I think the time the race started to unfold, the people started to have a lot of respect for Bryce Bizanson. And then, you know, then the cool thing was on Saturday, you know, we went down and did some testing at Hickory Motor Speedway. And, you know, that is such a tough track that most racers there, I mean, they're going to go in and test five, six, seven, eight, ten times. I know one racer that tested there almost 13 times before he actually ever raced there. And that that is, again, what a historic place. I mean, every great NASCAR driver has driven at that track. So what was your experience like there, just, you know, knowing that you were there just to test the car? It was really cool coming there. There's uh, definitely a lot of character on the track. And I'm going to be honest with you, that's the uh, hardest track I've ever tested on like it was just really hard to figure out I mean I thought I was doing everything right and then you, um it was 10 cars faster than you on the track you know it was a, it was still a really awesome experience so I was picking up speed throughout the day I feel like if I had a couple more days there we'd, we'd kind of get up the pace with everyone else but I mean I mean yeah it's very historic and you know I was pretty blown away with how with how much of a challenge the track is you know, to kind of get down. Yeah, well, I agree with that. So the bottom line is, if we get the opportunity, which I hope that we do, um, you know, to go back there next year, you'll be ready to not only, you know, do better in the task, but to get in there and actually race against some of those guys. And like I said, I mean, right now, you have two guys that race there almost every week that are leading the nation in points, um, which is Ryan Millington and, and junior motorsports driver Josh Berry. And then, of course, you have your race face teammate, Sam Butler, that's probably going to win Rookie of the Year nationwide in that series. And they're all racing right there at Hickory. So that'll tell you how steep the competition is there. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely very, very challenging there. I mean, just so many fast cars in all the classes, really. I mean, I, I actually watched the race there down there that day, too, and you know, I was just blown away at how, again, how tight the pack was. I mean, there's the super late race. There was probably a line of 12 cars, if I remember. It was, it was all bunched up by each other. It was single file. It was crazy. Yeah, well, that's why that, that track is legendary. So let's, uh, let's kind of move forward a little bit. And you ran a, a couple more races back with Jefferson Racing. And um, is there one particular race that kind of stands out for you? Uh, yeah, well, I got my first uh, top three finish about a, about a month ago in South Sound. That was a, was a pretty fun race. Uh, I was actually having some um, brake issues that race. And uh, there, we don't know what was quite wrong with it, but I mean, we got it all fixed. But uh, I was kind of losing some brake pressure. So actually, down the straightaways, I was kind of jamming on the brakes to keep the pressure up for probably, oh, probably probably 50 straight laps and my, my leg was getting tired, but 
I was in about fifth place and there was a, there was a caution. And during the restart, I just like blew by two cars and it was like five laps after that. And I finished third and I was kind of wondering why they were having issues. And I come to find out that they were also having brake issues too. So I, I mean, it was, it was, it was kind of crazy to see that two other cars were having the same problem, but I mean, we just were smart that race, you know, I never gave up. It was just a really fun race. Yeah. And, and I want to, I want to share with everybody that, you know, we're, we're looking at a race car driver here again, that with very limited experience coming really from, I, I'm just going to say, we come from a quarter midget to a super late model. And I can remember those first couple of tests that we did that, you know, we weren't even sure that, you know, what tight was, what loose being off. And so I think one of the things that really helped you, and I'd like for you to share a little bit with especially some of the younger drivers that might be watching this, how much it meant to you and how much you actually learned when you went up to um, Jefferson Racing and kind of spent a couple of weeks in the shop. How, how much of an advantage was that? And, and, and actually, how much did that help you learn more about the car, more you know, how to ask for what you needed in that race car. What was that like? Well, you know, I'll tell you how I started off in late model. I'd say like two words, tight or loose. And Jeff kind of talked to me. He's like, you know, you can't just be saying tight or loose. You need to say, where are you tight? Tight on the entrance, middle, or exit on on all corners. So that's six places. I, I got I to gotta tell him. And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> and it you know, it took me a couple races, and I, I also went down to the shop for quite a long time. I still do. I actually, uh, for my race of this weekend, I went down there Wednesday and Thursday to kind of, kind of get the car ready. But, I mean, it's done so much for me. I, I know a lot of that stuff now. I can, you know, tell them basically exactly what the car is doing. And even before that, I didn't know what stagger and like wedge and, like, uh, and like what – tie rods were and like there was so many things that I just didn't know how they worked and now I can you know ask I know how much stagger we should have I know I, I, I know a lot more about the car and it just helps to tell, tell him exactly what you want instead of him having to, having to ask you five questions to try and figure it out and kind of guess on what's wrong it it pays off so much in the end. You'll practice a little so much better. Yeah, it's very important. Yeah, and, and like I said, I mean, it, it's everywhere you go, you're fast. So I'm watching on Race Monitor, and I'm like, man, you're ripping off some of the fastest laps. And even last weekend at Yakima, I mean, you, you ran into a situation where some cars spun in front of you. I think you had to go off track to miss them. Uh, probably cut down a tire then, but didn't know it until – you know, you went back green flag racing, you had to come in um, and, and do a green flag pit stop, you know, and, and again, for people that don't know, um, in, in late model and super late model racing, pit stops don't happen as fast as they do on a NASCAR track. You don't come in and get 20, you know, 20 plus gallons of gas and four tires and everything and out in 12 to 14 seconds, that doesn't happen. So, you know, unfortunately you went 10 laps down, but you got back into that race, Bryce, and literally, the last half of that race, you were literally the fastest car on the track. Yeah, it was actually kind of funny. I, I get back, back on the track, and uh, my spotter says, uh, leaders straight away back. And I'm thinking, man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get passed by the whole field again. Then about 20 laps go by, and spotter's like, uh, leaders half a lap away. I'm like, huh? So okay. then I start catching up to the pack, and I start passing cars and cars and probably past eight or nine cars and then by the final laps you know leaders still straight away back and I catch the whole field from probably about half a lap back I see probably 10th through 5th all in the line and it, it made me feel a little better about myself because I mean we've had some pretty bad luck for the past three races actually this is the only race that we finished in the past three and it was 20 laps down but knowing that I had the speed to kind of race with the leaders, kind of put a little smile on my face, you know, coming off the track because it's definitely something that I needed because, you know, racing is really tough sometimes. And when you, when you don't finish your past two races and have bad luck again, it's just, 
you want to put your head down, but in reality, you just can't do that. You know, maybe in your next three races, you'll, you'll get in the top three. You just never know with racing. Yeah. So let's let's move off track a little bit. There's a couple of things that you that you do off track that uh, some people might find uh, interesting. You're quite the golfer. So uh, are are you competing at, at high school on the golf team again this year? Uh, yes, I am. Uh, unfortunately, our junior year. Uh, canceled last year because of COVID stuff, but uh, we got the green light for senior year. I'm uh, practicing a lot, or or especially now I'm going to start playing a lot more because I don't have much more racing coming up. I'll just start focusing on my golf game and I'm going to try and get a little better. So it, it should be really fun this year. Yeah. So potential sponsors, if you're out there, here's our plan: is we're going to get you out on the golf course, and then Bryce is going to say, "Okay, here's how the deal works. If I beat you, you got to sponsor me." If I don't, then, you know, you're kind of off the hook. So beware, because this kid's pretty good with the golf club in his hand. And, and that, that's something, too, I think that as you move further into your career, it's going to really come into play, because as we all know, there's a lot of business deals that are cut on the golf course. Yeah, I, I do that with uh, one condition. You get two mulligans. I got a little slice in my game right now. I just, I just might, might need to work out my kinks the first couple of holes. After that, though, then, then we're good. We're good, okay. So, and, and, and we probably need to strategize before you go play because we got to know the temperament of the sponsor that you're going to be playing on whether we decide that we're going to let them win or we're, or we're going to just pound them in the ground. Exactly. Okay. Now, Bryce, I also know that, you, that you've run Friends of Jacqueline on your car for the entire year. Tell us what Friends of Jacqueline actually means to you. It means a lot more to me than just a partnership. I've became, you know, basically family with, with their whole family. I mean, I, even uh, after my practices or, or even after my race this weekend, I went and visited them and had dinner with them. And I don't even think of Holly or their family. Holly's a girl who I adopted. We're not adopted, just in a partnership with, kind of trying to help her get through her uh, her times. That you know, I don't even. I just think of her as my friend now, and her whole family. Like it's just a really humbling thing to do, seeing a six-year-old who's gone through two phases of uh, leukemia. It just you know kind of breaks your heart, and I'm happy to say she's. Cancer. She's been cancer free for months now. I mean, she's she's doing a lot better. No more feeding tube. It's just been really really nice to see her journey of getting well again. And you know, her whole family and me. It's just such a great relationship we have. And it's convenient that they're kind of in Yakima. You know, it's not too far away from me. I'm down there a lot. It's just been such an awesome experience that I've had. Well, for any of you that don't know, let me tell you what, Bryce has run Friends of Jacqueline on his car all year, and he does that to heighten the awareness of FOJ's ability to be able to help these kids that are fighting pediatric cancer um, and other childhood cancers as well as that, you know, pediatric brain tumors, and he does that. So if you're a potential sponsor out there or anybody that says, you know what, I'd just like to help support that, we run those logos on the car because it's one of the only ways that we're able to spread the awareness of Friends of Jacqueline because of HIPAA laws. The HIPAA laws prohibits a hospital or a cancer institute in giving us information about a child who's sick. So every single time that we pull one of these race cars on the track with Friends of Jacqueline, people walk up, don't they, Bryce, and say, well, tell me what Friends of Jacqueline is all about. And that's how we're getting new people. And, and Bryce is a part of a much bigger group than just race car drivers. Over 560 major universities are involved in the Friends of Jacqueline program. The New York Yankees are involved. And it's an amazing deal. And Bryce, my hat goes off to you and your family for putting that logo on the car. So again, if you're out there and you'd like to help support these kids that are battling pediatric cancer, I encourage you to go to BryceBizantzenRacing.com click on Racing for a Cause, and you can actually make a donation there. If you're a corporation out there and you're in, in Bryce's area, or even if you're not, and, and you've got anybody, anybody in your organization, whether they're employees, their customers, 
or maybe they're just friends at church or whatever, and they have a kid that is battling pediatric cancer, guess what? Friends of Jacqueline wants to help. So again, you can get a hold of Bryce Bizanson um, and his dad, Jim. Let them know that you know somebody, and we'll hook them up. May not be with a race car driver, might be with a major college or university. I mean, the, U the United States Air Force Academy is involved, uh, West Point Military Academy. You've got Georgia, Alabama, Florida, Michigan, Ohio, Washington, USC, just about every major college is involved. And that's a pretty stout group of teammates to have, Bryce, when it comes to Friends of Jacqueline. Yeah, it's it, it's a really awesome foundation that I'm involved in. I mean, when it first came to me, I didn't think of it as as big as it really was. I thought of it as a you know a one time deal, like a lot of these things are. And I'm not saying the one time deal things are bad or anything, but this is just so much more to where you can be friends with this person for maybe even your whole life. It's just very different from a lot of other the childhood cancer foundations very unique in that way well bryce i want to thank you for being with us this evening uh do you want to give a shout out to any of the other sponsors uh yeah i'd like to give a shout out to uh, racecraft one the race based brand development of course we talked on the uh, friends jack and the uh, partnership i don't uh, count them as my sponsor but again it's really awesome to be with them and finally i also want to thank jefferson racing i mean they've been working so hard just to get me better and better throughout this year, especially with COVID around, it's hard to find races. They work their butts off to really make everything happen and big thanks to them. All right, well again, Bryce, thank you. Again, if you're not following Bryce Bizanson, go to BryceBizansonRacing.com. While you're there, check out Racing for a Cause, but also go into his fan zone and register for his digital newsletter. You can follow him on Facebook at BryceBizansonRacing.com. And again, viewers, thanks for tuning in tonight. Watch out for this kid because if he excels as fast as he has in the last two years from quarter midgets to super late models, there's nothing that he can't do. So again, my name is Ryan Wortham. And for Bryce Bizanson, we thank you for watching. And we'll see you next time on the next Race Face Spotlight.